Welcome to CNS Corvettes. I'm here on a quiet Saturday morning because I wanted to spend some quiet, uninterrupted time with you all to show you the process involved in recovering your 97 to 04 Corvette Sport and Standard seats using fresh leather and fresh foam. There's a bunch of little tricks to the trade here when you're doing this that are going to make the job go smoother and give you a much, much nicer final product. Um, I'm going to take you through step by step. Some of the things we're going to cover are uh, replacing the lumbar airbags in the sport seat. Uh, we're going to cover checking the seat track itself while you have the seat out of the car to make sure that you don't have anything broken or that requires service on the mechanical seat track itself. Uh, lots of different things we're going to roll through. Um, first thing we're going to do though is I'm actually going to turn the seat upside down so you can see the seat track and we're going to check the seat track to see if it has any problems and I'll show you what to look for. Okay, needless to say, in order to get to this point, you have to remove the seat from the car. Really simple. There's four nuts that hold this seat into the car on studs that come out of the floor. And then you've got one or two plugs, depending on how the seat is equipped, to unplug on the outboard side near the door. Honestly, if you can't figure that out on your own, guys, you shouldn't be doing this job. Assuming you did figure it out on your own and you have the seat sitting on your workbench, like I have this one here, Anytime you have your seat out of the car, you want to check your mechanical seat track for any mechanical failures or anything that can be improved because the seat track is really important when you're driving. Uh, one of the common problems that you've probably seen one of my other videos on is that the seat tracks will rock back and forth slightly under acceleration and braking. Um, we obviously make the kit that fixes that. There's another video that I've made a couple years ago that shows you how to do that job at home. But right now I'm going to run you through the three things you need to look for on your seat track before you even begin with the recovering process. First of all, you want to see if this seat track moves at all. You see that movement I'm getting right there, up and down? That shouldn't be happening. That's telling me that the rubber pads inside the carrier that rides along the threaded rod in here are worn because the petroleum-based lubricant that GM chose eats rubber. Who knew? Uh, actually, everybody but GM, evidently. Uh, so this tells you that while you have it out, it's probably best to go ahead and replace those spacers. They're called uh, Anti-Rock Seat Kit. You can find it on my website. And you can contact me if you have questions about that. Second thing you need to look for, these two plastic pieces right here, okay? These are what we call clevises. Now, you can see they attach to these threaded rods, which then have flexible transmissions that go into these two electric motors. What they do is they control the up-down motion at the front and the rear of the seat. Uh, in earlier C5s, they were white. In later C5s and C6s, they were black plastic. But regardless of what color they are, they all have the same problem. They're plastic. And over time, plastic ages and it gets brittle. And they snap right here. And then as this spins, nothing happens with this and your seat doesn't go up or down. So physically inspect these to see if they're cracked or broken. If so, again, I make the replacements out of T6061 aircraft aluminum that will never ever break. You can find those on my website. Again, contact me if you need help with it. Third thing, this is the rear of the seat, okay? Here and here are what we call the seat track flanges. Uh, they are made from the factory of a really cheap crystalline pot aluminum that is uh, very susceptible to breakage. And it, they perform an important function. They support this rod at the back that runs between these two seat tracks, and that's what allows your seat to move up and down at the back and also holds the seat track together. Um, if one of these shatters, uh, it'll be pretty evident because your seat back is gonna be sitting down at one corner, or if they both break, the seat's gonna be sitting way down at the back and you won't be able to move it up and down. This is one of the most common problems these seats have. In fact, normally when somebody does the anti-rock kit, they also replace these flanges. Now, I'm looking at this. Okay, so we need to do the anti-rock kit, which I'll do later. These clevises appear to be in good condition. I don't need to worry about them right now. Same with the flanges up here. They're nice and straight. They don't appear to be bent. And if they're bent, they're going to break. So if you see that, know that it's going to be coming in the near future. Now, now that we've looked at the seat track, let me go ahead and get this uh, seat turned back around and I'll show you the beginning steps of starting to tear it down.
Completed our brief inspection of the seat track, we're now ready to begin tearing down the old foam and the old leather off of our sport seat here. Now, before we can do that, obviously there's some things we have to remove off the seat that we're going to reuse when we put everything back together. But some of these things are kind of tricky in how they come off. Um, so we're gonna go through that step by step and I'm gonna show you the little tricks and the little angles of things that you won't be able to see on the seat as you do it, but I have other parts here to show you what you need to be looking for. I think it's gonna be really well put together for you. Before we do that though, let's go over the tools that we're going to use today. I've got them right here on this table. Okay guys, so these are the tools you're gonna to need to have on your workbench and ready to go before you get started with this project, okay? Let me run through them with you real quick. Uh, the good news is almost all of this is available at either your local auto, or auto parts store or at Harbor Freight for low money. Uh, first thing you're gonna need is 3M Yellow Super Trim Adhesive. This is a spray adhesive that we're going to use to bond the new foam to the fiberglass frame of the seat back. Uh, it's really easy to use, only takes a few minutes to set up, and once it sticks, it's stuck. Um, not cheap, they're about $18 a bottle, but this is the best stuff on the market to use. It's what we use here. Okay, as far as hardware goes, you're going to need, I hope you can get a look at this, you're gonna need a pair of hog ring pliers. You need about uh, 10 upholstering hard ring, uh, hog rings. Those are available on Amazon.com, or if you have an upholstery shop in your town, they'll be happy to give you a handful of them. They're usually really good about that. You're gonna need two fresh razor blades. You're gonna need six of these, what we call the Christmas tree pins. Uh, they are used to help retain the seat back leather onto the seat back. Um, when you pull the used originals out, uh, it tends to tear up these little ribs and they don't hold really well for the new leather. So we always include, when you buy a kit from us, we always include half a dozen of these to make your job easier. You're gonna need a set of sharp scissors or better yet, a set of shears like this because we're gonna be trimming seat foam before we even start putting the covers on it. You're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket because we're gonna take that seat belt coupler off to get it out of your way and that's an 18 millimeter nut. You need a small flat edge screwdriver or a pick. Uh, we're gonna need this a couple of different times just to get to tight fit places. Um, I'll show you when we get there when we need that. Needle nose pliers because there are zippers involved in putting this cover on and uh, usually it's easier to grab the zipper with pliers than try to use anything else. A Phillips head screwdriver and a straight edge screwdriver. Everybody should have that. Pair of side cutters that are nice and sharp. Uh, don't know if your Harbor Freight brand is gonna be strong enough for this job. Probably need to get a good pair of snap-ons or something for, for this part of it. And last but certainly not least, we have this particular tool. This is a specialty tool. It is actually used for removing these clips safely. Uh, I don't know what the actual name of it is, but let's just call it the Christmas tree pin removal tool for the sake of the video. Um, available at any auto parts store because almost everything automotive uses these things today. All right, so that's the tools we're gonna need. Once you have that assembled, go ahead and start the video back up and I'll start taking the seat apart with you. Now we're ready to start taking the seat back leather off of the fiberglass composite seat back frame. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to grab our straight edge screwdriver and we're going to pop this bezel off. Now, let me show you a little bit about that bezel so you know what you're shooting for here. So this is a different seat bezel like the one you see here, but I want you to see the back side of it, okay? On the back side, we have these two little arms that come out, and you can see it kind of has fingers that reach in and grab the mount in here. The object of the game is to get this off without breaking it. You can't always do that because being plastic and being up to 20 years old at this point, it can be brittle, but what we want to do is we want to take our straight edge screwdriver and insert it down here and down here and just gently pop this off. Let me show you how that looks. So screwdriver goes in down this side and pops. Oh, I got both of them in one try. Dang, I'm good. You twist it to get the slot lined up with the lever, pull it off, set it aside. You're going to reuse it. If you didn't break it, great. If you did break it, that's no problem. They're readily available new in all the original colors for about, I think they're 12 or $15. They're not bad. So set that aside. With that removed, the next step is we have to disconnect this vinyl from the leather that's meeting it back here. 
Now the way they do that from the factory is they have a coupler that looks like this. Kind of like what you'd see two train cars being truck coupled by. So there's a curve and another curve and they snap together and hold. So what you have to do is you have to unpeel one side of it and it'll pop apart. Let me show you the easiest way to do that. Have the seat on your workbench like this. Reach around the back, see where my fingers are, and just pull up. Okay? So now we are uncoupled. Next we need to go to the other side of the seat. Having uncoupled the vinyl from the leather at the back, we can go ahead and we can just reach our hands down and lift this pad up. Now that exposes a lot of things here. You can see it exposes four of the Christmas tree pins. It also exposes two of the four airbag bladders. Now while we're doing this job, I gotta tell you, out of the 200 sets of seats I've done personally here at CNS Corvettes, I would say 197 of them had the same problem with the airbags. The bladders are in good shape, but the plastic nipples that the vacuum lines hook to disintegrated about a decade ago, and they just turned to dust. So while your pump may be working and your switching may be working, there's no way for these bags to inflate because there's no nipples left. It's the heartbreak of no nipples. So I'm gonna show you how to replace these as we do this job, okay? So I've got this this far. Now it's difficult to see, but there is one more set of Christmas tree plugs back here, okay? And we need to get to those with our tool. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and lay the seat down because this is easier to do with the seat back horizontally. I'm gonna show you how to get to those Christmas tree pins and get them out. Once you have your seat still laying like this on your workbench, you're gonna go ahead and take your Christmas tea removal tool and you're gonna go and pull back the very top of the seat right where it says Corvette. And you need to get this under that black Christmas tree plug and just pry up. There we go. Okay, one done. Set that aside. And on the other side of the word Corvette, there's gonna be another one. So we need to get our tool down in there and pop that out. Once that's done, the only thing left that's holding this center panel in place is a zipper. Now, since you've loosened everything up, you should be able to reach in and find the end of the zipper just like that, okay? Now, you'll notice it doesn't have a tab on it like the zipper on the front of your shorts, so you have to use your needle nose, put them through the end, and just guide gently the zipper around. Goes all the way across the top, and then there's another tail just like the other one on this side. There we go. Go ahead and pull it through there. Okay, with it unzipped, this panel lifts out by itself and we set it aside. With the center section of the sport seat back removed, we now have real easy access to the other things we need to do here. There's four remaining Christmas tree plugs here and here on the inside of these bolsters. Using our tool, we're gonna go ahead and remove those two. These pins, you can probably pull out or leave in, it probably doesn't matter. I, as a matter of fact, always pull them out and set them aside so they don't drop off in the middle of something else I'm doing and then I'm trying to find black plugs on a black floor. That's no fun. Okay, two more pins out and on the bench, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and set this seat back up and show you how to replace the lumbar bags. With the seat back in the upright position, you're typically gonna take your fingers under this plastic that you see right here and kind of hook your fingers a little under the foam that's behind it and just pull both gently back and just let them stay behind this fiberglass wing here. Come around to the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. All right, at this point we've now exposed all four airbag bladders and this is the point where we get to have some fun and get some working stuff back into this seat. Now this is a really simple procedure but it seems to scare a few people. That's part of the reason I made this video to show you exactly how this is done. We manufacture these four airbags. Uh, we develop them 
uh, to be an improvement over what was available from the dealer. And here's what's important about that. Here are our new airbag bladders with nice, fresh, stiff nipples. Eh? The competition has had, on and off, available this whole assembly for about 150 or 160 bucks. The problem is, A, they're selling you this big piece of plastic, okay? That piece of plastic doesn't go bad. It's made of the same stuff as a milk jug. It doesn't go bad. Only the bags go bad. And on their reproduction, these nipples are as thin as drinking straws. So when you try to push these vacuum hoses onto the nipples, they twist and collapse. Nobody wants to deal with that in a hot garage when you're trying to get a job done. So ours are nice and rigid. They're very easy to work with. First thing I'm going to show you is how these attach to the plastic. You'll see this tab right here on the back of each bag. What that does is it slides onto a corresponding tab on this white piece of plastic. Let me grab that piece of plastic. I got a loose one here to show you what I'm talking about. This is that piece of plastic. And what we have are four tabs that these mount on. All they do, so you've got this big tab and you've got this little locking tab. You'll notice that these tabs are mounted at an angle. So what we're going to do, wider end goes on first. You slide it on. And then from the back, you can see, you know, this is going to be difficult, but stay with me, guys. You're going to put your finger behind that tab, lift and drop. Now, this tab has locked that bag into place. And all we have to do is connect our, va our um, air hose and the problem is solved. So I'm going to go ahead and do all four of these real quick. Um, you do all four the same way. There's no difference. Once these are installed, I'll go ahead and show you how to hook up the vacuum lines or the, uh, sorry, the air lines the proper way, and we'll move on from there. Having replaced all four airbag bladders with the new ones, as you can see here, that only leaves one real part left to the job. And this is where I get to share with you one of the little secrets I've learned through trial and error. You have four air hoses that we're going to plug into the nipples on these bags. But here's the catch. Whenever those nipples from the original bags disintegrated, the one part that didn't disintegrate was the part that was stuck in the opening of that hose. So what I always do is I take a pair of side cutters like so, and I nip off about a half inch of each hose, nice and clean, okay? And once that's done, the bad part, the broken part from your previous nipple is stuck in here. You don't have to mess with it. You just throw it away. From here, go ahead and just plug these hoses into all four nipples. Location should be fairly simple. You have a hose that goes out to this bag. You have a hose going up to this bag and a hose to this bag and a hose to this bag. Just go ahead and press them on to the nipple. Uh, if you want to use a little bit of Vaseline, if it's a little tight, that's fine. Everybody enjoys a little proper lubrication, but that will make the job easier. If you really want to get crazy about it, you can always throw a zip tie around it once it's on there. Use it like a hose clamp. I don't usually find it necessary, but if you want to do it, you can. Once that's hooked up, we go ahead, we put our fingers behind the foam and the plastic again. We kind of seat the foam back around like so. Move the cover around, tuck the foam. And from this point forward, we go ahead and put the Christmas tree plugs back in these two holes. Repeat that on the other side. Grab your center. Remember the zipper at the top? Okay, we're going to go ahead and do that last. What we're going to do right now is once these four pins are in place, let me go ahead and put them in to show you, and I'll be right back. Four lower Christmas tree pins back in place. We have our bolsters back and mounted neatly around these sides of the uh, seat back. We're ready to install this. Now remember, this has two plastic ears back here. The pins, the Christmas tree pins go through these ears and into these corresponding tabs and into those holes in the fiberglass. Again, I think it's probably going to be easiest for you at this point to go ahead and lay the seat back down like we had it before. 
And I'll show you why in just a second. Having placed your seat back flat against your workbench again, we're now going to go ahead and manipulate this into place so that we can get those Christmas tree pins through this tab and through this tab and into the fiberglass. Easiest way I found is basically the reverse of what we did originally. We're going to put our fingers just next to the Corvette word and we're going to pull back on the, on the foam like this. And you're going to see everything begin to line up. Once you have both slits in the plastic and that hole in the fiberglass lined up, grab your pin, start it through the first tab, put it through the second tab, and once it's in, you just secure it like so. And we go over here and repeat it on this side. Push the foam back, insert this through the first tab like so, push back, get to the second tab, get to the hole and push. Once that's done, it's time to re-zip our zipper. So you got to pull out both tails of the zipper like so, okay? Get the zipper started, make sure it's even. Once you have it started just that much, grab your needle nose pliers again, run that zipper, you may have to tuck a little foam, run that zipper all the way back along. Ah, come on, work with me. There we go. Make sure that both tails are available for it at this end, not getting tangled. Is it kind of, it's hard going around a corner with a zipper. You want to make this as easy as possible and you want to make sure not to gouge the leather with your tool as you're doing it. When you're done, tuck the zippers back in place. We can set our seat up and I'll show you what we do next. Final step in our process for this particular job is to relatch these train coupler style hooks that we already did. Now, if you're reusing the factory originals, it's still that same train latch. On some of the aftermarket stuff, uh, like we're going to be installing here in a minute on a separate video, uh, that can be Velcro, it can be a zipper, there's several different manufacturers doing it several different ways. But from the factory, it's just this simple two-piece plastic. This is the curved part here. This flat part has to curl around and be snapped in. So we push, we pull, we turn, Oop, did you hear that snap? That's what we were looking for. Same thing over here. And that, my friends, is a sport seat with fresh lumbar bladders that's ready to go back into your car. Uh, Real-time job, this is going to take you less than an hour. If you decide to do your passenger seat at the same time, that job will take you about 30 minutes because you will have made all your mistakes on the first one and you won't remake them on the second one, good Lord willing. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions about this, give me a call at 800-886-5064. Uh, these lumbar bladders are available on my website at CorvettePartsCenter.com. Look forward to hearing you if you have questions or concerns, or if you just want to tell me how great they are, I'm willing to listen to that too. Have a great day.